thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah this morning, Lord God. We say hallelujah, Lord God. Father, we lift up hands, Lord God, saying hallelujah, Lord God. Just thanking you, Lord God. Thanking you for who you are, Lord God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord God. Father, we just thank you this morning. We say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. We say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. We say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. We sing 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 hallelujah to your name, Lord God. We say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Father, we just thank you and we praise you this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Father, we know that you are God and there is no other, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God. We just thank you this morning, Lord God. You didn't have to bring us through another week, Lord God, but you saw fit, Lord God, to breathe into us, Lord God, each and every day, Lord God, that we may be here this morning, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for food on our table. We thank you for a place to reside, Lord God. We thank you for the clothes on our backs, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for every good and perfect thing, Lord God, for we know it comes from above. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, we thank you this morning, Lord God. Father, you are a good, good God. No matter what's happening in the world, Lord God, we say hallelujah, Lord God. We glorify your name, Lord God. We know that you are God and there is no other, Lord God. We lift you up this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Father, we thank you for all the times you saved a wretch like me, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all the different circumstances in our lives, Lord God, where you saved us, Lord God, even the ones we don't even know about, Lord God. There are some that we experience, and we know that it's only by your grace and your mercy that we're still here, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, but we especially thank you for the ones that you just snatched away even before we were aware of it, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, 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 Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God. Father, you are welcome in this place, Lord God. Move us out of the way and let your spirit within us, Lord God, rise up, Lord God. Let it rise up, Lord God. Let it rise up, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God. Let our spirits co-mingle with yours, Lord God. Let us always be submissive to you, Lord God. Let us never, Lord God, never, Lord God, step out before you, Lord God, and always be a follower of you, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that we're able to experience you, Lord God. We're able to hear from you, Lord God. We thank you for the invitations to your table, Lord God. We thank you for the walks in the garden, Lord God. We thank you for the angels you are assigned to us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this call to ministry, even though it wasn't anything that we wanted on our own. But if you say it, we'll do it, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We 
thank you for what this ministry has done, Lord God, and will continue to do as long as you allow it, Lord God. Those we've touched in other countries, Lord God, those we've helped here, Lord God, the words that you have given us, Lord God, to share with your people, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you this morning, Lord God. We just thank you, 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 Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Father, we like to lift up all those, Lord God, that are still going through with the virus, Lord God. You know we have fasted. You know we prayed, Lord God. You know the numbers that have been lost. You know the people that are in a hospital right now, Lord God. Those that are sick that can't go to a hospital for whatever reason, Lord God. Father, we lay them at your feet, Lord God. We give them to you. We don't wait on no vaccine, no government, or anything else, Lord God. We look to you, Lord God. Father, baffle this world, Lord God, and release a healing in the name of Jesus. That all of them would rise all over the world at one time, Lord God, when men and women would have to bow down to you, Lord God, and say that you are God, and there is no other, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Anybody going through anything, Lord God, whatever it is, Lord God, Father, we bind it now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind it now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind it now in the name of Jesus and speak a release for your people by the blood of Jesus and the precious name of Jesus, Lord God. Break, Lord God. Break every sickness. Break every so-called disease. Break those unknown illnesses. Break those drug addictions, Lord God. We speak break, 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 break. Break, 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 break. Break, 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 break. Hallelujah. Break, 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 break. Hallelujah. Do raba baba bahande. Nde kere bo kondo. Ndo di baba mande kere bo kondo. Karabande kere bo kondo. Ndo rabashende kere ba
We just thank you, Lord God, for every word, share every prayer, lift it up. Overcome us in Christ's group of churches, Lord God, every member, Lord God. We thank you and praise you, Lord God. We lift up every church, Lord God, that follows after you, that have a relationship with you, Lord God. We lift them up in the name of Jesus, Lord God, asking that your spirit, Lord God, would reside in them, Lord God, that it would make a difference in your people, Lord God, that change would take place. As Pastor Linda, Prophetess Linda said, that healing would be released this day in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Release the healing, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Wherever it's needed, Lord God, anybody who's taking the time to watch this, Lord God, not just the people that's watching this, but just release it, Lord God, throughout the world, Lord God. We're not pointing out specific people, Lord God, but everyone, everyone, our brothers and sisters, Lord God, release it now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, especially our persecuted brothers and sisters, Lord God. Bless them now, Lord God, in their need, Lord. Bless them now in their lead, need, Lord God. Bless them now, Lord God, in their need, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you this morning. Father, I lift up my wife, the prophetess, the pastor, my soulmate, Lord God. One of the gifts that you've blessed me with. I lift her up to you this morning, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I speak that healing that's being released right now on her too, in the name of Jesus. Let the healing go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your healing go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your healing go forth in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Bless her, Lord God, as she comes before your people, Lord God, sharing and pouring out, Lord God, that which you have given her to share. We pray, Lord God, that it would touch lives, Lord God, and change people, Lord God, that they would stop doing what they're doing, Lord God, and follow after you. We just pray, Lord God, that through this ministry, Lord God, that people would take their importance off of themselves and their wants and their things, Lord God, and put it on you, Lord God. Put it on you, Lord God. Make you a priority in our lives, Lord God. We just thank you and praise you this morning. Bless her as she gives the word, Lord God. Gird her up, Lord God. We speak no weapon formed against her. Whatever prosper, Lord God. Wash her in the blood of Jesus. We just thank you and praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, 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 Lord God. We just thank you and praise you this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. We are Remnant. This is Remnant International Church, a home-based ministry that's shared via the web, praying to touch lives all over the world because anybody can just tune in and listen to this message no matter where they are. That's what God has given us to do as part of our ministry. And we pray that today's message and every message that we've released would touch lives and have people surrender to the one and only true and living God and give him the glory in everything. We thank you for tuning in. We thank you for those that tithe, those that submit offerings, those that keep us lifted up in prayer to continue doing what God has called us to do. Those that pour into us, that gives us the energy, the strength to keep on pushing forward, no matter what's going on. 
But we give God the glory in everything. We thank him for his son, Jesus Christ. We are remnant, and we welcome you this morning. We've been talking about the persecuted Christians. We've told people that if you send a donation, put persecuted Christians, we'll submit it to our apostle and their church and stuff that sends it on to the different uh, ministries, the different people that need it. We said that remnant would double it. We thank God for those that have already done it. We understand this is a pandemic. We understand that some people have lost their jobs. We understand there's a need here, but there's a need greater than what's here for our brothers and sisters in other countries. So if God puts it on your heart to help, help. If you can, it's all right. Keep them lifted up in prayer. Some people just pray for their own families. When they're praying, it's just about their own families. You can bring them in a group and say, listen, we're praying for this specific thing, and they'll just pray for their own families. There's so much more that we as a people of God need to be in prayer for. And one of them are persecuted brothers and sisters all over the world. We thank you for tuning in. I pray that you would give Pastor Linda, our prophetess, your undivided attention and not what she's about to share and bless you with, would touch your spirit and that you too would have that ultimate relationship with God. God bless each and every one of you. Pastor. Healing is being released this morning. Receive your healing by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. When Pastor Callan was praying, I began to see a woman. She was leaning on the side of her bed. She was sitting and leaning forward on the side of her bed. Hallelujah. She was in so much pain. I can tell just by what the Lord was showing me that she was in a lot of pain. And then the Lord said, I'm healing her. Tell her I'm healing her this morning. I began to see the Lord in the spirit touch the top of her head and her body just totally transformed. And she got up trying to feel where the pain was and there was none. Then the Lord began to show me a man. He was walking with a cane. And he threw down his cane and could walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is healing this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I saw another woman in the spirit. And she was just kind of out of it. You know how you take a medication that has a specific strength. And it just makes situations worse rather than better. And then in the spirit, I began to see her throw the pills away. God said they're no longer needed. They're thank no you, longer Jesus. necessary. Amen? Thank you. Lord. Amen. We thank you. And, and then you, right before I got up here, I began to see a woman. Thank she you, was Jesus. looking at the, at the screen of wherever she was watching us. She was looking at the screen and kind of turning sideways saying, I can't really hear what they're saying. And immediately in that same moment, God opened up her ears and she could hear clearly. So we praise Hallelujah. God for healing this morning. You, if Jesus. you are Hallelujah. in the need of healing, if you are standing in the Thank need of a wholeness in your Thank body, you, receive it by faith in the mighty Thank name you, of Jesus. Jesus. Don't Hallelujah. let this moment pass by. Don't get Hallelujah. distracted. Hallelujah. Don't think about Hallelujah. something else, but Hallelujah. receive your healing Hallelujah. by faith. Hallelujah. By faith faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Before God even released the healing, I began to see chariots in the spirit realm. Chariots in the spirit realm. And there were angels throwing fire down. Throwing the fire of the Lord down. And the fire of the Lord would burn up anything that is trying to come up against you. But when the angels tried to throw fire down into the midst of different churches, it was being blocked. And as I pressed in and looked, 
And I'm like, Lord, why is it being blocked? He said, people stand in the way with their agendas, with their programs. They're standing in the way and blocking the move of God. They are blocking it. People standing in the need of healing. And people are blocking it because they want to do their own thing with a song. They want to do their own thing with a dance. They don't want to yield and they're not sensitive to the spirit of the living God. I said, Lord, help. Lord, help. And immediately in that moment, I saw a moving away, a parting, like an opening. And the fire of the Lord began to come down and go through and hit the churches. It began to hit the churches. And immediately, one by one, I saw like a row of men and women of God, each one of them. The fire came upon them. The fire of the Lord came upon them. God wants us to carry his fire. He wants us to carry it in power and authority. We have to move out of the way. It's not about what you want to say. It's not about what you want to do. It's not about your favorite song. God is saying, let him do what he does best and has been doing before the foundations of the world. That's heal, deliver, and set free. Who needs healing this morning? Who needs deliverance this morning? Who needs to be set free this morning? If that's you, receive it by faith. Begin to pray in your most holy faith and pray right now in Jesus' name. Pray for that move of God that you need. Pray for that healing you need. Pray for that deliverance you need. Don't just sit there. Pray. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We just give God all the honor, glory, and praise this morning. Because if he wants this to just be a deliverance service, it would be a deliverance service. If he wants this to just be a healing service, this would just be a healing service. It's about what God wants. It's not about the people who rehearse the song. It's not about the musicians that rehearse. It's not about people who practice a dance routine. It's about none of that. It's about being sensitive to the spirit of the living God and knowing what he wants to do in the moment for the greater good of those who are in the midst. Amen? We have to stop getting tied into agendas. Hallelujah. We have to stop getting tied into programs. Amen? It's all about God and what he wants to do. So, Father, I pray that I decrease this morning, God, mm -hmm. that you would use me fully. This is your platform. You just allowed us to grace it on Sundays, God. But this is all about you, and we just thank you, and we honor you, Father. Oh, we give you, you glory. We give you the fruit of our lips with a hallelujah, saying, have your way, God, today and every day, like never before, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. You, the title of our message is Withdraw. Withdraw. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So this is not going to be lengthy, but it's going to be necessary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Jesus is our example. When it comes to withdrawing, Jesus is our example, right? Amen. And we should be following his example in our entire lives, every part of our lives. Not just our Sunday lives, but our Monday through Thursday and Friday through Saturday lives. Everything, right? Amen. Oftentimes, people think that you have to be available to them. Amen? Oh. And being available to people is a good thing. It's not bad. But the goal should never be for them to need you more than they need God. Amen. 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 They should never need you more than they need God. They want your help. They need your advice. They want to shoot something by you. And that's fine. 
But many times, however, you have to withdraw. You have to withdraw. Why? Because Jesus did it. To love. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Jesus loved people, but when it was time <coughs> to pull away and go and pray and hear from the Father and be with the Father, he did that. And he withdrew without apology. He withdrew without an explanation. And like Jesus, you have to withdraw, I have to withdraw, we all have to withdraw to that place where we can hear God. Amen. Right? Amen. We have to withdraw away from people who hate you. Amen. Right? You have to withdraw away from people who are setting a trap for you, even. Amen. Right? We have to set, we have to withdraw away from people who are too familiar. Maybe they just feel like you owe them something, right? Mm -hmm. Away from people who don't respect you. Amen? Amen. Away from those who are family sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Amen. Away from those who are jealous. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Away from those who want to make false accusations against you. They did it to Jesus, right? Away from those who are simply wasting your time. Mm. That's key. Because a lot of times we will think we're helping, but the very person we're helping is an assignment from the enemy to waste precious time. Mm -hmm. But when you withdraw away to be with God, he can prepare you. He can tell you that. He can give you revelation. They don't really want help. They just like going on the hamster wheel in a circle, wasting time. Amen? Amen. Withdrawing a way to be with God positions us to get more of God. Amen? Amen. So why do we need more of God? Because of the world we live in, right? Mm -hmm. Because the world loves stuff more than God, money more than God. The world loves sex, drugs, rock and roll even uh let's be clear right as a remnant and we aren't just remnant international church we consider ourselves a remnant meaning we go above and beyond what's necessary or what the basic christian would do because we want so much of god that everything we do is led by him breathed by him moved by him and everything Amen? Amen. So as a remnant, we should never compromise, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what people can get away with. We do what God says to do. Amen. And we follow Jesus' example. Amen. Amen? Now, we've said this before. Many people only come to the Father, come to God, call out Jesus' name when they need something. And the Bible clearly doesn't say, well, here's the Bible, but just break it open in case of emergency. Mm -hmm. We're always supposed to have an active, thriving relationship with God. This plant is thriving. That means it's not half dead. It's not wilted. It's thriving because it's getting exactly what it needs to stay alive. Likewise, we need exactly what God offers every single day of our lives. And when we are lacking, when we aren't withdrawing and spending time with him, we have a deficit. There are parts of us that begin to wilt and become weak. And as believers, we don't want that and we don't need that. Because you can't fight a battle if you're weak. You have to be strengthened and then you're ready for battle, right? Amen. We need to learn to come to God when he needs something, not just when we need something, when he needs something. Amen. When we get that little tugging Amen. on the inside, when we hear the gentle voice that says, why don't you meet me in prayer, right? Amen. What God needs and desires from us is obedience, right? When is the last time you withdrew to be alone with the Lord, mm. right? When is the last time you came into his presence, not seeking or wanting anything, but just saying, God, you're just so good. Mm -hmm. 
you brought me all this way. You've done all of this for me. You positioned me this way. Any, everything I have and everything I do is because of you, and I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. When is the last time you came into his presence to just say, Father, what do you want to talk about today? What do you want to show me today? What do you want to reveal to me in your word today? Right? And I know many are probably saying, well, I don't know God like that. I don't hear God like that. So, you know, that's not the kind of relationship we have. He doesn't really talk to me. When I pray, I don't hear anything back. But ask yourself, for those who do ride bikes, how did you learn to ride a bicycle? Mm -hmm. You got on the bicycle, and even if you fell off, even if it didn't move forward the way you wanted, you still kept trying to get back on until you were flowing and riding and the wind was in your face, right? Amen. You don't get on and just start riding, <coughs> right? You wobble a little bit, and before you know it, you were riding. We must come to God and keep coming to God until we're hearing him, we're seeing visions, we're feeling his presence, and like this morning, we're seeing and sensing the fire and the power of God coming down to shift and change the atmosphere, right? We have to come to God until he says one word to us, three words, and then before you know it, a sentence. You might not go into the presence of the Lord and withdraw to be with him, and he just, you know, a whole monologue. He might just say, pray. Amen. He might just say stop, mm -hmm. and then he'll show you what he's telling you to stop. But withdrawing to be with God is of the utmost importance in this hour. Amen. 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 Thank I don't know exactly by number how many times Jesus withdrew, right? How how often he made what was going on with him less important and went to have a long time with the Father. Luke 5 and 16 says, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now the key is that he prayed, but the key that supersedes that is often, Amen. right? Amen. So he didn't do it once or twice. It didn't say a few times, which might be two or three or four. He said often, often withdrew into the wilderness to pray. So why the wilderness? Who likes the wilderness, right? If you're in the woods among the trees or, you know, somewhere where, where there are not many people, right? Pastor Calvin gets it because he's, he's raising his hand, amen, right? Who likes the wilderness? It's an uncluttered environment where you can hear God clearer because it's free of distractions. Amen. It's easier to hear him if you don't have to fight over the volume of the television, mm -hmm. you know, um, try to press in over the children that are crying, you know, deliveries coming to your door, the doorbell, the phone ringing, text messages. When you go to the wilderness, you're saying, forget about all of that stuff and let me just be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Here's the thing. When you withdraw, the place to which you withdraw is also going to then become the place where you are equipped. Amen? Amen. Where, when you withdraw, that becomes the place where God will begin to equip you. It's like you presenting yourself to him saying, here I am, Lord. Here I am. This is uninterrupted time with you. Here I am. Do what you desire to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And you might say to yourself, equip. Equip for what? What am I supposed to do? You know, I'm just going to church. Or, you know, I'm just the usher. Or I'm just the musician. But we are actually being equipped for war. 
Amen. In case you become desensitized to what is going on, this is the time it's necessary to equip yourself. You, I mean, it's okay to be aware of what's going on on the news, aware of what's going on in different cities and towns and even countries, but God still needs to equip you. You need private time, quality time with the Lord so that you can become equipped. Amen. Right? Amen. You, you need to be equipped so that you can defeat the enemy. When you see protests, when you see killings, when you see murder, when you see disease and, and, and the toll, every time you turn the TV on, there's a number of how many people have expired and are no longer in this life. You know that the enemy is at work. You get equipped to defeat the enemy. Amen. Amen? When you withdraw, when you make it a habit, when you get deeper in God, when you make it a priority over everything else, God will begin to endue you with power from on high. Amen. Amen? Amen. That power will make demons tremble. Amen? Amen. And that power will set the captives free. And I'm not talking in theory. I'm talking about the literal fire that will smite the enemy. Mm -hmm. Elijah called down fire. Mm -hmm. Amen? I'm talking about authority and fire from heaven that when someone comes before you and you say, come out of him, whatever is afflicting, binding, or assaulting that person has to obey your voice and will come out. Amen? Demons will actually come out of people. Amen? Amen. People who have agendas, people who want to run people over with cars, people who want to shoot at protesters, people who want to loot and rob. That's the spirit. That's the spirit of theft, robbery, murder, all rolled into one. And as a believer, when you are endued with power from on high, you can speak, you can, you can calm the seas, you can turn those things over so that they no longer rule us, but we rule them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We have played patty cake long enough. And when I was writing these notes or revising them, rather, that's what the Lord began to say. Patty cake time is over. There's no more time for that. It's time for us to pick up our weapons. You can't be scared, well, if I fight, then the devil's going to attack my family or my kids. You have to know that the authority that you have is greater than that, right? Mm -hmm. We've said, now I lay me down to sleep prayers long enough. It's time to loose those tongues and shift the situa situation, not just in your city, not just on your block, not just where your family lives, but everywhere. Amen. When when you come and you withdraw to be with God, he will give you an assignment. He might tell you pray for Russia. He might tell you pray for Africa. He might tell you pray for Costa Rica. And you have to take that assignment seriously. Because here's the thing, what we're all doing and working and in place to do what we're specifically called to do, then everything is covered. You don't have one person running over here trying to pray for Africa, running over here trying to play for this country. Everybody has an assignment and you do your God assignment so that his kingdom is on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. No more patty cake. Amen. It's time to come higher Amen. and it's time to go Amen. deeper. Hallelujah. Why? Because when you meet a stranger, you should be able to pray that spirit of alcoholism off of them. Amen. Amen. When you get a member, uh, a message from a member of your family that so-and-so is in the hospital, you should be able to command sickness to come up and off and out of their body in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you get a message from a friend that's feeling a little down, you should be equipped to tell depression, you're evicted. You must go. Go right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Amen. We are equipped. We are equipped. We're supposed to be equipped. Amen? Mm -hmm. Deliverance is a key in this lifetime. 
You heard Pastor Calvin last week. He was talking about witchcraft and all that stuff. And we can't be scaredy cat Christians that don't want to talk about that stuff because it's like, well, that's not the nice stuff that you talk about, you know, in a Sunday service, right? As believers, right, we should not be born carrying the sins of the Father and just dying the same way carrying those same sins because we don't think that, you know, we think that because we go to church, they don't exist. We need deliverance. We need to be made whole. Oh, Rabbi Shata, we need men and women of God who are ready to be built up saying, I will go, Father. I will do it. Tell me what you need to do. Turn my plate over for a week. Okay, yes, sir, I will do that. Thank you, Father. And then the power will come upon you that you can walk through your neighborhood, walk through the hospitals and heal the sick. Now, do the medical professionals want that? I, I mean, I can't speak for that, but pharmaceutical-wise, if you heal people, they don't need medication. Amen. If you heal people, they won't need that medication. Amen. Amen. You have to be ready to be built up in this season, Amen. right? Amen. Instead of thinking, well, if God wanted it gone, he'd remove it. Amen. When the fact is, you have to search the word yourself and open your mouth, right? We have to stop being babies. We have to stop waiting for the pastor to say this and do that. Because even if the pastor never says it, the word does. Amen? Amen. If the pastor never says it, if he never teaches on it, the word still talks about healing. It still talks about deliverance. It still talks about setting the captives free. You're not just held accountable to what your pastor says. As believers, you have to be in the word and you are held accountable for what the word says. You, I mean, you wouldn't have a car and not fill it with gas. So you won't have Christians that are effective in any area that aren't filled with the word of God. You have to fill yourself with something because if you don't put the word in there, then the world is going to be in there. Amen. You're not going to defeat the enemy being full of the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. You need the word of God. You need his fire and authority and you need to withdraw and spend time with the creator, father, Amen. Abba. However you address him, you need to be making time for him, right? You, Jesus. Some of us are locked into denominations that will never tell you about deliverance. Mm. God said that. Mm. God said that. They will never tell you that there's something hindering you or influencing you, right? Hallelujah. Let me share something with you today. If you say or have ever said, that's not the way we do it at our church, the Lord said that's a spirit. That's called a religious spirit. Mm -hmm. Religious means doing something, you know, in a certain way. I can wake up at 8 o'clock every morning, pour a bowl of cereal. And with that being said, I eat cereal religiously every morning. That's what a religious spirit does. It follows a pattern and wants to keep doing it the same way, even if the same way you're doing it doesn't bring any results. Mm -hmm. God wants results mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. He wants our testimonies to go far and wide. Mm -hmm. Because why? A testimony will preach louder than an eloquent sermon. You can preach a sermon, but if someone was healed, that makes God more real than just giving, you know, a sermon. So our testimonies matter to God. He wants us healed, delivered, and set free. Now, this is not pointing the finger. This is not picking on anybody. The bottom line is you have to love God than you more than you love your denomination. Amen. That's why we always say this is God's platform, mm -hmm. right? If God says start a little early, if he says start a little later, that's what we do. If he says, you know, pray for 30 minutes or 45 minutes instead of, you know, a shorter time, we do what God is saying so that the stage could be set for him to have his way. We have no idea who our messages are going to come in contact with, but God knows. And if he needs a specific anointing to be on a teaching so that those who 
hear it or set free, then we have to move out of the way. Just like I saw in the vision, we have to move out of the way so the fire of God can inhabit our service. Amen. Yeah, now you may think, okay, yeah, well, they have a keyboard in there, but there's nobody singing. There's nobody ushering in. When you pray, the presence of God is ushered in. When you speak in tongues, no. the presence of God is ushered no. in. Yeah, I mean, singing songs and all of that can help, but there's nothing like prayer and there's nothing like speaking in your holy language. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'd rather have a holy language than an entire choir behind me that may or may not be filled with the presence of God. Amen. Amen. So it's about God. It's about what he's saying to do. We can't get caught up in being religious that I'm so holy or we don't need to do all of that. We need to serve God and do what he says. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He also began to tell me procrastination is a spirit. Mm. There's some that are saying, okay, I understand what you're saying. I'll get to it eventually. I'll learn about deliverance later. Um, I'm not ready or procrastination. That's a spirit too. Oh, let me read one more deliverance book. Then I'll be ready. Um, you know, what if they don't listen to me? What if I don't really know what I'm doing? You have to bind all of that and let God use you. You have to fully surrender so that God can use you. That's it. There's no formula. This is not a competition. Well, they do it this way. They do deliverance this. They do it this. You have to just say what God is saying to say. Command what he's telling you to command. And what needs to come out will come out. Amen. God is tired of excuses. Amen. 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 Even as I was writing this, he said many people follow so many popular preachers. And every time that person posts, they're right there. But you're abandoning your own prayer time. Mm -hmm. You're abandoning your own time to withdraw and be with God and hearing what he's saying specifically to you. Now, they may have done it. They've gone and prayed and done their time, and then they come ready to say what the Lord is saying. But what is he saying to you personally? What has he put you in charge of? What has he told you, I need you to intercede for this particular group of people, this city, this state, this church? Have we gotten our assignments or are we just all over the place? We need to get equipped. Amen. 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 When you see an army going forth, it's going forth together. Amen. They're not scattered, two over here lingering by a tree, one over here by the brook. I mean, you have to come together with a plan, and we get our plan, we get our marching orders from heaven. Amen? Amen. God is tired of excuses. Amen. You have to do the work. Amen. You have to put in the work and be consistent. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? We don't care how our moms did it, how our dads did it, how our grandparents did it. Right now, God wants you to do it the way his word says. He wants you free. He needs you to be obedient. He wants you to present yourself as a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My prayers always consist of me saying, Lord, search me and see if there be any wicked way in me. Right? Because in our own eyes, we could be so cool. I'm the bomb. I'm this. I'm that. But then you're doing things that God doesn't find very pleasing. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get caught up in pride because pride comes before the fall, Scripture says, right? And that fall is hard. You need God to search your heart so that he can prune it as he equips you so you are more effective to do the work that he's called you to do. Amen? Amen. Hmm. Amen. Amen. And if you're saying to yourself, well, I hear you, but I don't know about deliverance. We went through an entire book telling you about the different strong men, right? And we're about to go even deeper than that. Amen. Amen. Many people are trying, you know, they really are, but things still aren't working out for them. 
you need to be then tuning in so that you can hear the different things that God is going to say and the different things he wants to release so that you can step into your healing. You know, you're not really dedicated to the things of God if you can take it or leave it. If you have a take it or leave it attitude, well, I'll tune in today. Oh, what's the topic? Or, you know, you have to be sold out to the things of God and just receive what God wants you to receive. Amen. If you keep being presented with the fact that deliverance is necessary, the goal isn't to run from it because you, you're not ready for deliverance. You don't want to hear about deliverance. Um, the goal is, okay, God keeps showing me this. This is confirmation. Let me submit and get my deliverance. Let me get it already because God must want me delivered so he can use me for a specific purpose. So allow him to use you. Allow him to deliver you. You know, that's one of the reasons why the things we watch are so important and we need to safeguard our eye gates, ear gates, and everything, right? Because a lot of times when you say deliverance, the first thing people think is the exorcist. I don't want to be floating. I don't want to be, you know, spewing green stuff. I don't want to this and that. Let God deliver you. A lot of times it doesn't even happen like that. Some people cough. Some people sneeze, you know. I mean, you need to just let God take you where he wants to take you. Because the sins of the father passed down to the third and fourth generation, according to Exodus, is true, right? Amen. Amen. You don't want to be carrying something or you don't want to be <coughs> passing down something because you felt you didn't need deliverance and now your son and daughter is carrying it and their children's children are carrying it. It has to stop with you. You Amen. need to break that thing now, whatever that thing is. Amen? Amen. Deliverance isn't a game. It isn't a trick. It's the Lord freeing you, right, to break all consequences of sin. And sometimes that sin is not your own. It could be the sins, like I said, of the generations past, but you still need to be delivered from it. And a lot of times, deliverance and Healing go hand in hand. I hear the Lord saying that in my ear right now. Healing and deliverance go hand in hand. So sometimes people are um, seeking healing when they really just need to seek deliverance because once you're delivered and that thing breaks off of you, the sickness no longer has access and it needs to go. It will go. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember um, when I was attending a, a different church in North Carolina and it was a deliverance ministry, even though it didn't fully function like that. But there was these moments where we would go to the community and we would get food. And, you know, the pastor would preach and, you know, they would have tables set up with bread and different food items for the people in the community to come and take and listen a while. And there was this one guy that had come, right? He came and he was listening, right? And the pastor, the apostle, I forgot if he's a pastor or apostle, he began to pray for him. Now you can tell this guy was out there, mentally out there. He had like ball patches all throughout his head, sores and everything. It almost reminds me of that passage in the Bible where the, the guy came from the tombs, right? And he prayed for him. Right? He commanded whatever was on his mind, whatever had him walking the streets and talking to himself, he commanded that thing to come out of him, right? This was a two or three or maybe even four day like revival type thing that we were doing. And it was either a day or two days later, he came back, he had a fresh haircut, he had on a shirt, a button-up shirt. I don't think he had a tie, but he had on slacks. And he looked totally transformed from what he had formerly been and what everybody in the neighborhood oh, yeah, yeah. probably saw him as Thank and thought he would that. always be that. God wants to change oh, us the same yeah. way. He wants to break whatever has our mind oh, going in circles, whatever voices we're hearing that are not of God, oh, whatever is yeah. tormenting us, whatever is tormenting oh, our body. I mean, to see that transformation, I was just amazed. And then every single time we came back to that city, 
that guy would show up for service and he was still healed and made whole. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for deliverance. Amen. It's necessary. He could have spent the rest of his life saying, I don't need deliverance. I'm good. I'm cool. I'm, you know, whatever. But because he submitted to that and because the sovereignty of God wanted to see him free, it was so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God wants us to come higher just like that. You know, we can't just wait for 2020 to be over and say, okay, I'm going to start 2021 fresh, <laughs> right? We have to go from now. It's time to come out of the caves. It's time for us to stop hiding as believers. It's, stop, oh, Shatta, it's time for us to stop making things and people more important than God. It's time to be the remnant that you say you are. Some of you should be specifically praying against this coronavirus. God wants to equip you and endow you with the power from on high that when you touch people, their breathing would come back to normal in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. We have to yield to what God is calling us to do individually so that as a body of believers, we are one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's work to do as the army of the Lord. So many of us just think, well, I'm going to church. That's enough. I'm having a seat every Sunday. That's enough. That's not enough. There's more for us to do. John 14 and 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. That was the King James Version. The message says, believe me, I am in my Father and my Father is in me. If you can't believe that, believe what you see. These works, the people who trust me will not only do what I'm doing, but even greater things because I on my, I'm on my way to the Father and I'm giving you the same work to do that I've been doing. What does that mean? You should be doing what Jesus did. Amen? Amen. He turned water to wine. Mm -hmm. He multiplied the fish and loaves and fed a multitude. Amen. I mean, just think about that. You have loaves of bread that's not enough to feed all of these people. There's riches and glory in heaven. Jesus raises them and they're multiplied and there's so much to feed all the people that there were scraps left over after the fact. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? He healed the sick and raised the dead. We know that. He delivered and set free. He was an example. Amen. And we are his remnant. Amen. So if Jesus did that, those are our marching orders. Mm -hmm. Those are our instructions. We should be doing the same thing. Who are you praying for? Mm -hmm. Who are you delivering? Or at the very least, who are you pointing to deliverance? Amen? Amen. Who are you praying for that they be set free in Jesus' name? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I just thank God this morning. Hallelujah. I give him all the glory, honor, and praise for what he's doing in Remnant International Church. You know, this is not to boast of ourselves. We boast in Jesus. He is the healer. He's the deliverer. We're just instruments that he uses. But right now, I just want to pray. Father God, we pray right now in Jesus' name that everyone standing in the need of deliverance, everyone standing in need, Father God, of more of you, Father, that they would be awakened right now in Jesus' name. That that slumber that the enemy has put upon them would be broken off off in Jesus name Father God that their eyes would be open God that their, their mind would be activated Father God to hunger and thirst after the things of you to be more in you to be that godly example to be that remnant God that you have called us to be God we give you glory today we oh, say Lord. healing is our portion in the mighty Lord. name of Jesus deliverance is our portion in the mighty name of Jesus we just 
just thank you today, God. We give you glory, God. It's not about us, but it's all about you. We just thank you, Father God, that we don't have to follow in the footsteps of, of people in our past, God, people in our history, people in our genealogy, God, that have done wrong, God, that we can be washed and made clean, that we can be forgiven, that we can be transformed, Father God. We just give you glory today, God. We say have your way like never before, God. Heal the people. Set them free. Give them a testimony, Father God, so that they know that they were touched by the God of heaven. Amen. We pray even now for Amen. heavenly Amen. visitations, that you would release your angel, God, to carry what the people need, or rabashende, whether it's revelation, whether it's healing, or rabashete, whether it's a cleansing, Father God. Let the fire fall and purge us, God. Let all of the impurities in us come out, God, so that we are gleaming like gold in your presence, God. Lord, we give you, God, all the honor. There is none like you in all the earth. I just praise you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just pray, God, for everyone who not just watches this message but receives it by faith. I pray that you would unlock every door in their life that is closed today in Jesus' name. That every barrier blocking them will be toppled over in Jesus' name. That every root in their life hindering them and trying to keep them stuck would be uprooted in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. It is only you, God. You get all the praise and glory, God. None goes to me. I'm just a vessel. Have your way today, God. Do what only you can do. We pray that this message, Father God, reaches near and far, that it's a blockbuster viral video by which people know that they can be healed and made whole, that no matter what they've done, that you can forgive them. Father, you've forgiven murderers, God. You've forgiven rapists, Father God. Lord, you've forgiven those who have done things that they thought were too wicked to forgive. You are a God that doesn't sit there with a measuring stick determining what you're going to forgive and what you won't, God. You forgive it all, and we thank you today, God. Have your way, Father God. Do what only you can do in our lives, Lord. Purge us and wash us clean, Father. Oh, we thank you this morning. Oh, have your way, God. Do what only you can do, Father. We bless you, God. We give you glory today, God. Do it, God. Do it for us, Father, God. Touch the woman. Oh, Thank you, Father God. I just saw a woman and her child, and she's wondering how she's going to feed the child. And I saw someone put a package on her doorstep. And they put groceries on her doorstep. We just praise you, Father God, for feeding those who are hungry in Jesus' name, for touching the hearts of the people, God, to allow them to not just think about themselves, God, but to extend that helping hand to others. We praise you today, God. Do it, God. Do it. Meet the needs of your people. There's no lack in heaven. There's only riches in your glory. And we just thank you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I just pray and I just seal this prayer, God. I pray even now, God, that you would assign angels to this prayer, that they would carry it straight to your throne room, Father, and it would meet no interference, but it would go up and be a sweet smelling savor in your nostrils, Lord. We praise you and we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you just now. Pastor Linda was talking about withdrawing and 
being in God's presence and things. And that's what we're doing. That's what we do week after week, day after day. We are recruiting soldiers for the army of the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, and people get a little bit messed up when we say the army of the Lord. The army of the Lord doesn't carry AK-47s. The army of the Lord doesn't need nine millimeters, meter, meter, millimeters, or right. whatever it is, and, or no explosive vest. We use the word of God. That's how we fight. We fight in the spiritual realm for everyone, for the deliverance, for the healing to take place. To put people in the place where God's assigned them. Us and then made a specific point about when we recruit people, not just us, but people that are working for the kingdom, recruiting men and women for the army of the Lord, and being assigned to their specific place. A place where God had appointed you before time to do a specific work. If we were all on one accord, what a world this would be. Mm -hmm. I'm always talking about teamwork makes the dream work. It makes it work even in the kingdom and stuff. It works because of teamwork. Think about it. It started with God. God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. If we can learn to work together as a team and not thinking that it's all about us, it's all about God. God gets the glory. So he wants us to share with you that he wants to welcome you into his kingdom. There's work for you to do in the kingdom. This is not our home. Our home is with him. We got work to do in the kingdom. It's time for you to punch the time card here on earth and do the work that God has called you to do. Come to Jesus. You need to withdraw. Come to Jesus. It's about repentance and Lord, I have, I've led my life. I've ran the streets. You allowed me to do everything and you still kept me. I'm still here. I'm still standing. Well, you're looking for a change. Why you can't get any breakthrough or anything else? Still going through the motions and not doing anything. Whether you're in the ministry or not and stuff, come to Jesus. Like Pastor Linda said, you got to withdraw and be with him. When you withdraw and you're spending that time with him, you feel a love of God that no man, no woman can compete with or compare with. And then you willingly surrender to God. You say, Father, what is it that you would yeah. have me to do? That's right. Where do you want me to go? Who do you want me to sow in? What is it that you would want me to do today? And you do it. You'd be standing in a place like this if this is your assignment. God may have you minister to people. Whatever it is that he's calling you to do. It's not even about a title. It's just about doing what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. This is a big place. We got to do what God has called us to do to make a change while we still can before Jesus comes back. So we pray that if this message has touched you, that you would just bow down and surrender to the will and purposes of God this morning. That you would welcome him in. Like we spent the time, welcome him into our midst. Wherever you are, just welcome him in. If you don't know how to, if you're thinking you don't know how to, just thank him. To say, Father, I recognize you. I'm just thanking you for who you are and what you've done. I want to have a relationship with you. I don't want to do the things that I used to do. That's right. I'm looking to you, Lord. That's right. I want more of you, Lord God. And seek his face. That's right. Please don't get left behind. We just thank you and praise you. God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.